Hello, hello. What is going on in the house? I got a two camera set up tonight. Here and yeah. Oh shit, I forgot my glassware. So a little rusty here. It's been a long time since I've done a live stream, but um, you know, just knocking the rust off here. I forgot my glassware, so I had to run and get that right immediately after I press play. So how do you like how do you like them apples? But anyway, um, so let's just kind of hang out for a couple minutes. Let's hang out. What's going on there, Jeff? Jeff Hodges, glassware is good. Michael Magdalen, Mad Madigan. Hello, hello, hello. And uh, Gary, I'm not tasting yet, so should not be putting the things in the chat. So, bad Gary. Uh, ADHD whiskey. No, Gary, don't be put them in the chat. I'm, I'm not tasting yet. Oh, no. I'm just talking to people right now. No, 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 no. Shit. I didn't see, I didn't see the chat, so uh, I saw Gary drop the, the product names in the chat. I haven't started tasting yet. Uh, so hopefully, 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 hopefully I won't see those when I pop that back up. So if you're just joining me, we started early, obviously, but here is what we're doing. Uh, I'm doing a blind tasting tonight, uh, in the chat down the road, not right now, later down the road, we are going to have the, uh, Gary Penna will be putting the products that are in there the products that are in there and um and so you'll know what they are as i am tasting them uh i do not know what they are but even though even though uh they were dropped in the chat while i was looking i closed my eyes i hit them but i, I didn't really i didn't really see them um but uh so yeah so these are blind 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 and let's see there we go. All right. So I am not going to scroll. Uh, I'm not going to scroll down. It looks like we're all good now. Uh, Saucy Shane says, cheers. Hello. How's it going, Saucy? Uh, ADHD Whisk Whiskey says, uh, which, by the way, Matt is celebrating his 50,000 um, uh, subscriber, 50, subscribers on his channel. So after I'm done with my show, I'm going to go over there and check him out if I'm still standing. So congratulations to my good friend and... Ascot judge. That's right. Matt is an ascot judge. So congratulations, my friend. Congratulations. Tater Dom. I love the name and love the mullet more. So Matt Store is thinking K Luke's gonna win. Um Matt Store is really excited about this lineup. I appreciate that. I really appreciate it. Uh Robert Shea, Friday night and hanging with Fred. All right, all right, all right. Yeah, it's been a while, Robert. It has been a while since I've done one of these. But first of all, can you guys hear me okay? Does everything look all right? So this is camera one, camera two. Um, yeah, looking good. I think it looks good. We've already, we've already got uh, quite a few people in here before we're even, even set to go. So, you know... I got to say, I'm so excited about this. It's been a while since uh, I've done a live stream. I'm super, super behind. Uh, but kind of like I said in my newsletter today, uh, I've been filming for like a lot of TV things. I've had, uh, I'm writing a new book. Uh, I can't share too much on those things, but uh, just say I have a lot of really cool things cooking. Well, by the way, I am still... Um, I am still, you know, a dad and a, and a husband and all that stuff. And I happen to have gotten, gotten the, uh, the old, uh, jujitsu bug. Like, so I've jumped into jujitsu, um, neck and feet first. So I'm, uh, 
really spend a lot of time in that as well. So if you're joining us right now, go ahead and give us a like. It helps. Uh, it helps kind of get this um, get this out there. So if someone's just kind of scrolling through YouTube and you know there's uh, there's a bunch of likes on a live stream, YouTube will prop it up. So if you'd be so kind, hit a like, give us some love. And if you're not subscribing already, you can hit that subscribe button to become a subscriber. That is the only way you will be able to comment in the chat chat section uh, tonight. Uh, reason being is like you know it helps kind of control the chat a little bit. But go ahead and give a give give some love, give a give a a, a like button if you can. Tim in the house, good to see you. Um, Mashed Matter, Fred kicking it, Wayne's World style, camera one, camera two. Love it. Thank you very much, Mashed Matter. Good to see you. Damon Brown in the house. So Damon uh, is an old writer buddy. It's a backstory for you. We are in New York for a writer's conference, and we are at Guy Fieri's restaurant, and we're looking at these... uh, we're looking at these pans, and Guy Fieri actually has his face in the pans. And we're like, are you really going to cook with his face looking at you? And then while we're kind of laughing at that, my wife calls me, and she's in uh, Vegas at the time. I'm like, oh, no, something's up. She calls me, and that was uh, when she told me that uh, she was she was pregnant. And so she was pregnant with Oscar. And so Damon and I you know, celebrated that night. He was the first person to know uh, that um, I was about to be a dad. So that's really great to see you here, Damon. Right on, man. Right on. Uh, so Jeff Cunningham in the house. Forrest Moses thinks that K. Luke is going to uh, going to win it all. You know, a lot of lot of a uh, lot of love for K. Luke tonight. I not you know K. Luke has done well. They won best small batch at uh, the Ascots. They have been. Uh, they have been really doing exceptionally, exceptionally well. Now, the lineup we have is a is a uh, is kind of a hodgepodge of cash strength and uh, some barrel finishes. And you might ask yourself, like these don't make sense. You know, anytime you do like a taste off, um, when you know the you. When you're in the beginning, you try to pick, you try to put things together that are all kind of similar in proof, uh, similar in uh, age, similar in uh, mash bills. But when you've been doing it for a while, you know you really do need to be able to taste an 80 proof product up against a cash strength product. I mean that's just part of being a critic. You've got to be able to, you got to be able to have a discerning palate uh, with every single glass. So, you know, as you see these, uh, this, this honey and th- this honey and toasted barrel go up against, uh, you know, seven year old cash strength, you're like, eh, that doesn't make a lot of sense, Fred. Well, the r- rationale is you got to be able to taste all, all the time. Uh, and it doesn't matter what, what anything is. You just got to be able to, uh, taste it. Uh, so Robert Shea says my mama or my mother, uh, Bought me one of those pans with Guy's face on it. Ridiculous. Now, Robert, question for you. Have you ever cooked with that pan? Do you like, and like, do you like try to put like the egg in between his face? Do you have like a, you have like a technique? I'm curious about that. Jonathan Garrett in the house. Good to see you, Jonathan. Good to see you. And I do know I have been, uh, I have been slacking on the live streams for you jonathan but i'm glad you're here we are going to have a great time uh tim cornway cornay hey fred how about journeyman two years in a row barrel pick soon you know tim so he's talking about um uh journeyman the small distiller in uh, michigan with corsip whips and whiskey two years in a row they won my ascot awards uh which is the american spirits council of tasters and they won best in show, defeating uh, incredible scotch, incredible bourbon. You know, it's just it is unprecedented for a small distiller to do that well in a major competition. So, and the amount of uh, whiskeys that we had entered, it was definitely a a tough one, uh, tough one to to win. Uh, all right, so. 
while I've got you all a few things to kind of talk about, you will see I'm going to have uh, I'm going to have this scroller here tonight, so you are going to be able to see what the uh, what the products I am tasting in terms of what I am tasting. Not necessarily, and Gary, don't put it in the comment section. Don't put the products in the comment section yet. But there will be someone, Gary Penna, will be in the chat indicating what it is I am tasting as I am tasting it. And as I am tasting it, you will see these things pop up here. There we go. You, you're going to see, like, I'll be currently tasting uh, LA4. And then, um, and then you know, you can go into the chat and see what is LA for. So you will be able to get my uh, comments and thoughts and results uh, as I am going. And uh, Hal Jarvis says, "Jujitsu, I'll have to watch my p's and q's in here." Well, uh, I would tell you, Hal, uh, I'm I'm uh, I kind of suck at it, so I don't think you have anything to worry about. But uh, I tell you what, I absolutely love it. It's it's a wonderful, wonderful uh, combat sport. I wrestled, so I I love the I love that kind of like uh, grappling nature. It's oof, I I didn't realize how much I missed that from being a kid. So we are about to get going. A few things I want to talk about. Um, I've got I've got a lot of uh, really good barrel picks coming up. I picked uh, eight barrels from uh, the Barrel Craft Spirits Company uh, to include a, a an eight year old, I think eight or nine year old uh, bourbon uh, specifically for the Arkansas market, and uh, I picked um, uh, a champ was it a champagne? No, it was a uh, Sauternes finish uh, rye that was phenomenal, and I think a champagne finish rye just phenomenal. Uh, we also have some Jack Daniels barrel proofs coming up. Those are, uh, we got three of the 25 allotments for uh, the Jack Daniels rye. So we got three Jack Daniels barrel proof ryes coming up, one for the uh, state of Arkansas, and two for um, the general club marzipan group that I have. And then, of course, we have a, uh, standard uh, Tennessee whiskey as well. So very, very excited about that. Uh, you can learn more about my barrel picks and exclusive content that I have going on at Club Marzipan. You can learn about that in the comment section, or not the comment section, but you can learn about that in the uh, in the description. And as I have mentioned here before, I'm moving away from the YouTube membership channel and going more toward, uh, I'll move my club over to Patreon because YouTube would not allow me to do things like uh, barrel picks and uh, send you things. So I want to respect YouTube's policies, but at the same time, you know, I know how I want to interact with you all, and I couldn't even do like a, a Zoom call. So we do, we do, um, we do monthly tastings together. We do uh, taste training. We do all kinds of stuff. But you can learn more about that in the description. Uh, and also, tonight is actually a fundraiser. We are we are um, um, we are in the middle of raising money for the USO. If you look in the upper right hand corner, if you're in your desktop, or if you get into the chat, you'll see how uh, how you can donate money. But since it is the 4th of July weekend or 4th of July is coming up, I'm an Iraq veteran. I love uh, the USO. The USO was incredibly helpful for me when I was coming home from Iraq. Uh, Iraq was, you know, I mean, I'm very public about uh, what the things that had happened to me uh, there. And uh, to include, like, I mean, 19 years ago, uh, last week, I was nearly killed. And, and that's something that um, I think about a lot. Uh, and when I came home, the USO was there. The USO is incredibly supportive of soldiers, existing soldiers, Marines, uh, air, air members, Air Force members, uh, Navy, Coast Guard. I mean, they're there for those who are serving. And that's, that's who I want to be there for. So I'm trying to raise some money 
for them tonight. You know, our goal is three thousand dollars, and you know, it's not a lot, but that three thousand dollars could go a long way for an area uh, trying to revamp their place. So, if you'd be so kind, think about uh, doing a, a donation tonight. And I won't, I won't unfortunately be able to see it live, but I'll find a way to uh, to thank you. Uh, and Tater Dom in the house saying that he is a three stripe white belt on his way to being a blue belt. Right on, man. Right on. That is awesome. That blue belt. They say once you get blue belt, though, you know, you're like, oh, well, I got this jujitsu stuff down. I'm done. So hopefully you stick around after that. And of course, Kurt Colson here. Uh, Kurt is actually a member of, uh, he's been on the board of, um, the uh, USO. He's actually a member of Club Marzipan too. Kurt is just one of the most amazing individuals you will ever meet. Uh, so much love and passion for for helping others, and uh, it's just incredible wealth of uh, whiskey too. He's that boy purchases uh, way too much whiskey, and you know. But is there ever really enough, Kurt? I don't know. I don't know. All right, y'all. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead. You know, for a few more minutes. Take any questions you might have, and then I'm going to uh, jump into it. Um, but so put in the chat if you have any questions before we get going. I'm going to I'll be turning the chat off that I can see. I'll turn it off, and uh, and then I'm just going to go, and I'll start talking about each one of these products. And I, if this is your first time sitting down with me on a tasting. I do not um, pull punches. I am honest about the things uh, I review. While I receive samples uh, galore, unsolicited, mind you, most of the time from distillers, uh, I do not care. I, I'm always going to say if I like something or if I don't like something. I realize that often offends the fans. It offends the distillers. Sometimes I've, I've had uh, distillers who uh, won't talk to me anymore. They usually get over it. But um, it's it's just how I am. I smell something. I put it out there. If I taste something, I put it out there, good or bad. So that is what you have with me. I am uh, candid. I'm honest. And I've been doing this for a very, very long time. Um, engineering teacher, will you talk about how you, you can have a blended single barrel, the Hirsch? So engineering teacher, this was actually going to be a rant I was going to start things with. So I'll hold off on that. I will I will be answering that for you because I don't know. <laughs> Brendan Hogan, when are you going to come to Colorado to pick a few 291 barrels for the club? Well, Brendan, I think I do need to make another trip to, um, to Colorado. I do. I love Colorado and I love the whiskey scene there. And what about a, what a, not just a 291, but what about a boulder? Old Elk, something like that. Oh, Brendan even said Old Elk. All right, all right, y'all. I'm gonna, I'm, I'm all in here. Let's do this. I'm going, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to jump in here, and we are going to do this tasting tonight. I am now turning off the chat that I can see. Gary, you are free to drop in the chat what we, what I, uh, what the numbers are that I will be tasting. However, this is also what I will be tasting. You can see I've got a new little uh, solution. I can put a ticker down here. Uh, I've got things listed by the proof, and I have also mentioned the price. Uh, this pricing may not be exact. These will be based on uh, either an SRP or whatever is a popular website that I would have visited uh, to extract that proof. So I'm going to start by talking about uh, Brothers Bond. Brothers Bond, this is a product that is uh, started by uh, Paul Wesley and Ian Somerhalder. They were, um, they were together on Vampire Diaries. I've interviewed them both. And I got to tell you, Ian Somerhalder has a legit palate. He has a legit palate, and he is a legit blender. Like, he is actually blending their whiskey they work together on blending it but they are actually doing it they're a part of it they're not just like celebrity you know pretty boys out there uh talking about the whiskey and so this is their cash drink product it's a composite of 70 barrels um they don't really disclose the age range 
but it's MGP, and I know what's out there. Uh, they do say that it's a minimum of four years old, but I'd say that you're probably looking at four to six years old uh, within the 70 barrels and maybe one or two barrels that are eight years, seven or eight years. So this cast strength is coming in at 115.1 proof. Now, you have something that I think is an... I, I used to always talk about how single barrels is a protected term because you cannot uh you cannot lie about it like it is a something that you could be you could say is a a, a single barrel and the government could just come in and check or whoever wanted to come in and check and sure enough it came from one barrel I always said that because I, I would talk about that because small batch can mean absolutely anything small batch can mean uh, 1,500 barrels. There's no actual federal definition for what is small batch. So here I am, you know, getting this nice pretty bottle here. It says uh, the single barrel Kentucky straight bourbon whiskey, double oak. Okay, that's great. Uh, then on the back it says ratio. Whoa, ho, ratio. What's a ratio? This is a single barrel. How can it say ratio if, there, if it's a single barrel? It says 95%, eight years, seven months, uh, 72 corn, 13 rye, 15% malted barley, and then 5%, uh, three, th 5%, three years, seven months, 74 corn, 18 rye, and 8% malted barley. Yeah, take a look at that there, all right? So you see that? That's what's on the label. And, hey, absolute hats off to uh, Hirsch for having transparency on this for uh disclosing what that ratio is and I, that's that that's fantastic but you can't really call it a single barrel i i just think i think that this is an inaccurate inaccurate uh description of single barrel it is a blend of straights in an additional barrel so to call it double oak is fine i i think that's fine but to call it a single barrel double oak man i don't know um, and I realize that the government approved the label, and that's every that's always everyone's defense. Oh, the government approved the label, Fred, so it's it's okay. But I, I just I don't know. It doesn't pass the smell test. And yes, they're being transparent. That's fantastic. I appreciate that. I really, really do. But the single barrel, which is two barrels, uh, or a blend going into one going into one barrel, it just uh, it just does not it does not add up. You know, it just doesn't. Ah, so it is not a single barrel, but it is a double oak, and I am excited to taste it. So there's that. Okay, I just talked about this one in my in my fishing video, where I was like, I love take this is I love sipping on Michter's uh, barrel strength after a fishing trip, whether it's a campfire pour or it's in the house with air conditioning. Uh, I, I don't, I can't really tell you why. I just really like tasting this after a fishing trip. Now, it's worth noting that uh, I probably need to be a little bit more judicious because this is the only bottle I got. So, you know, these Michter's cat barrel strengths don't exactly grow on trees. Uh, so... The reason why I'm actually doing tonight's tasting is that I bought this bottle here. I, I picked this bottle up at Kroger with some milk, by the way. Uh, it's two, uh, the 2023-2. Two two two. This is the Apprentice batch. And I, uh, I kept hearing from people, man, I heard this is not any good. I heard it's not any good. I heard it's not any good. I heard you got a bad review from so-and-so. I, I do not like having... I don't like being influenced by other people. I'm typically not influenced by other people, but I was getting so much negative commentary about this particular release that I was not comfortable doing a review on it because I didn't know that if I would taste it that I would have some sub subconscious bias one way or another because everyone disliked it. So I was like, you know what? I haven't done a live stream in a while. 
why don't I just go ahead and uh, do a live stream and throw the bookers in there? So that was the impotence behind doing tonight's live stream was just to basically find out if I like bookers and, you know, put it in a blind field, which it's always better to taste blind. It's always better to taste blind. If you're if you're knowingly tasting, you can have influence by marketing, you can have influence by the bottle. Uh, so from where I sit, it's very important to uh, to taste blind. Okay, so K Luke, this has been this has been one of the one of the great new wonders in American whiskey. Uh, they won best small batch uh, in the Ascots and were a vote or two away from winning, um, you know, best bourbon overall. But man, they are just crushing it. It's this is a, a blender out of uh, Mississippi, and if you're not if you're not focusing on K Luke right now you are going to have a hard time finding them when you finally figure out that they're, they're putting out some great whiskey. So this this house right here, K. Luke, is just absolutely fantastic. And this is their batch four. Um, I also, you know, I, I also, when I, when I saw that, when I got this bottle, I knew that it was in the competition and I didn't want to taste it beforehand because I feel like, I feel like the this blender is is puts out very distinct flavor profiles and i didn't want to have that muscle memory on my palate so this is my first time tasting it since the ascots uh so here we go this is a uh, here's another uh kind of wacky one this is a bourbon and corn corn whiskey cask finish uh in uh, honey and toasted barrels and why am i throwing in that in there like well it's on the rotation to be tasted and like what the hell you know what the hell? I'm gonna throw that in there, but uh, it's it's uh it, yeah we'll see we'll see where that goes, but I don't I don't have I don't have high hopes for that one. Okay, so as it turns out, I only have five glasses. I thought I got six, so it's, here are your competitors. I'm gonna go grab a glass. Like I said, y'all, I'm a little rusty. I'm a little rusty. This is my first. Uh, this is my first live stream in a very long time. Very long time. So here we go. All right, I am going to start with L A four. So L A four is going to be our first product. Once again. Um, you can view these in the chat. So you will see the you will see the products in the chat. If you are catching this recording later, meaning not live, then you will see the uh, the letters and numbers in the description as well as in a pinned comment. Now, I'm trying to get myself organized here. I'm just going to throw that off the desk. Throw that one off the desk. All right. Okay, so here we go with LA4. So you take a look at that color. Pretty dark. Pretty good. Pretty good color there. Very sweet. There we go. Very sweet, very honeyish. Hmm. A little lavender in there. Lavender was one of the um, uh, nosing uh, aspects of Taste Camp this week for my uh, Founders Club within Club Marzipan. So lavender's fresh on the mind. All right, so here I go, going to the palate. Mm. Oh damn. Ooh. That's really tasty. That is really tasty. It's like uh cornbread with like a like a honey butter on it. Ah. 
Hot damn. Hmm. That is good. Okay. So I got a good feel for that one. By the way, in case you're wondering, I have the results while you guys can see them uh, live. I had someone do the blind pours for me. I have the results right here. You can see these have not been opened, so I do not know what they are. But you all can see them in the chat. That was LA4. In my mind, uh, that is a strong, strong contender. My only, my only really major criticism of it uh, would be it tasted, there was a little bit too much alcoholness in it. Like I, after kind of like this honey and this really nice cornbread note, um, it kind of, uh, the wave of proof kind of overcomes me. So that would be the only criticism I have it that's of significance. All right, so now next up is going to be JV6. JV6. All right, where are you, JV6? Well, hello. This is not going to be easy tonight. Okay, so this has some like um, some floral to it. Some uh, what is that note? That you know the packing uh, the packing peanuts you get uh, from uh, from shipping. It's got that it's got that packing peanut smell. I don't know if that's a good thing or bad thing, but I do know that when I was a kid, I used to eat them. Also, probably not a good idea. Oh, yeah. Oh, boy, that's a traditional bourbon right there. Really um, knocking through with these with these notes of, uh, um, I want to say, nutmeg, uh, nougat, uh, I feel um, I feel a little bit of creme brulee here. Um, uh, I get a lot of <sighs> what is that? Like pumpkin pie, a little oak. But you know, I don't like oak as the main flavor. This is an accent. This is just a little bit of oak. It's not. It's not the majority. So that's that's one thing to point out. Yeah. That was delicious. Now, which one do I like? Uh, do I like JV6 or, or LA4 more? Got to be honest with you. Got to be honest with you. I, I would lean a little bit toward JV6 because it was not as aggressive on the palate from an alcohol perspective, but it was not a... a a sweep it so I would need to go back in taste it again but my gut instinct says JV6 just has a little bit of the edge on it okay so next up we are going to taste LH1 LH1 All right, LH1, let's see what's up. A little peanut butter. A little crushed almonds. Like, there's a lot of uh, nuttiness here. Some earthiness, too, like maybe some tree bark. Tea, like tea. Like, this thing is really... It's got a lot going on in the nose, but it's not taking you down a path of like, say, uh, wow, this is butterscotch and caramel and and toffee and uh, chocolate. No, this is this is taking you down a winding road of a whole bunch of other stuff. Yeah. 
Yeah. Very oaky. Very oaky, very um very tannic, very The oak is kind of the dominant note here. And whenever oak is the dominant note, woo, it's a bad sign. It's a bad sign uh for me. So and then there is like this kind of grassy, like uh, fresh cut grass, uh, uh, a cilantro kind of soapiness to it. Yeah, LH1 is probably going to finish dead last. Yeah, there was a little bit of honey on that last one, but yeah, Ugh. not not dead cat bad, but pretty bad. All right, so next up, we're going to go to AS4. AS4. If you haven't already, hit that like button. Tell a friend we're live streaming tonight. It's uh, been a while since I've done this, so not even sure anybody's out there because I can't really see. I'm just tasting. Hmm. Okay. So AS4... Got a really nice, got a really nice kind of spearmint, kind of herbal, little um, like fried bread kind of smell. Oh, AS4 is definitely to be reckoned with. It gets all up on the palate. It just kind of hits on that tip of the tongue, walks on back, really populates in the back, very spicy, kind of curling in under, underneath with some bitterness there. AS4 is not joking around. This is a solid, solid pour. Um, it may be my favorite. It may be my favorite that I've tasted, but again, I got to go back. We're just going to go ahead and not taste LH1 again, but uh, JV6 and LA4. You know, I, I'm not saying that they are going to be as good as AS4, but I do want to do my due diligence and retaste it. But so far, just my muscle memory is really enjoying how AS4 feels on the palate. It is really, really lovely. All right, so now we are going to go to TL3, TL3. And you may notice I am not spitting tonight. When I have um, when I have 20 spirits or more, um, I've got to spit. If I don't spit, I would pass out, you know, and I'd you know be way too hammered to be able to taste effectively. So as long as as a taster, if you are able to continue. Um, focusing on your tongue, if you are able to like really um, concentrate on the notes, you should be fine to have a little bit. But it, you know, if I'm if I'm tacking on twelve more, ah oh boy, you got to be careful, especially at this drink. So uh, in competition, because we taste so much, like at the end of a competition, I may have actually tasted. 400 products um now there might be 2,000 entered in the competition and i only tasted 400 that's because there are other judges right so you you just got to be mindful and also let's let's be very candid here this stuff is meant to be respected it's meant to be enjoyed responsibly in moderation and i do not believe in getting yourself hammered while you're tasting so you if you're getting hammered while you're tasting uh, you're probably not a very good taster. So, them's the facts. 
TL3. Man, this is going to be hard. TL3 is coming in very similar as a JV6. Pumpkin pie, nutmeg. Oh, man. I love that. Take me to Thanksgiving already. Give me the yams. Give me the pumpkin pie. Oh. Mmm. Some bitch. That is something else. That is delicious. I just want to I just want to sit down at the table with this, break it down, have a campfire by me maybe, call up my old buddies, Sea Biscuit, call up my old buddy Painter from college and just shoot this shit. This is this is the kind of whiskey you want to go down memory lane with. You want to read a book with. This is this is great. I don't know if it's going to win tonight, but TL3 really has control of my palate. It's absolutely delicious. Now, I mentioned those Thanksgiving notes. This has candied yam on it. This has uh, pumpkin pie. Um, is, there, is there butterscotch there? Is there caramel vanilla? Is it, yeah, it's got those things. But this this has, if, if I were to give you one note, candied yams, where that, where that whipped cream, that little uh, frosting over the top is kind of burnt. That's what I'm talking about. Mm. TL3 has my heart right now. Okay, so now we're going to go to NQ5. 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 There we go. Nice color. Doesn't seem to be falling apart. Oh, shit. This is also good. <laughs> There's only been one stinker in the bunch. This has been, this has not been, I did not make my job easy here tonight. Cinnamon roll, um, coming out of the oven, getting that icing on it while it's hot. It's got that smell of those like uh, cinnamon almonds or pecans when you go to that state fair. And they give you that bag of like over cinnamon uh, nuts, whether it's almonds or walnuts or pecans. Ah, it smells just like that stand at the fair. Feels like butter. Feels like absolute butter on the palate. Cinnamon butter. Oh my god. This is absolutely, positively delicious. Oh my god. I am not looking forward to ranking these at all. This is not going to be fun. Um... But I'm not. I'm not here. I'm. I'm not here to, um, you know, play nice. Like I actually have to. I have to do this. This is what I do. So, um, yeah. Let me. Let me get to. Let me get to that. And I am going to put. I'm going to have it in the. I'm going to create a little bar so you can know what is going where. Oh god, I wish I didn't do that. LH1. LH1 is coming in sixth. So oh, I regret going back in and tasting that. And if you are the distiller of it, if you're the maker of it, and you think that it might have been a bad bottle, 
I will always taste another bottle. I will tell you, it's not it's not like bad bad. I just you're up against some really really elite whiskeys here. The next five, I think the the next five could uh, win any competition. I think the next five could uh, please uh, the right tasters. You know, I I do not think that um, the next five are in any way, shape, or form worthy of that fifth place. I think I think I I could say that I have a three way tie for first or a five way tie for first. But it's probably this is probably a, a horse race between uh, AS four TL three. Uh, NQ5 and JV6, but I gotta I gotta find that. I mean, I really do think this is a three four three four uh, horse race here. I'm gonna go to JV6 to see if that's gonna stay in the running. Yep. Go to LA4. There's a lot about LA4 I like. I'm sipping LA4 right now. But at the end of the day, LA4 uh, lacks the depth that the others do. It is it is better than uh, LH1, but it's not in the same league as the other four. So let me get, let me see if I got that right. Yep. All right. Now put that over there. Oh, well, I messed that up. Like I said, fellas, like I said, everyone, this is, uh, the, the rust is coming off. There we go. There we go. It, it's not going to be perfect. It's not going to be pretty, but look, it is what it is. All right. So we have a four way tie. Between AS4, TL3, JV6, NQ5. You can see the product names uh, and the codes on the bottles in the chat. Now, you may ask yourself, why are they named TL, TL3, JV6? That's because I hired a guy to take care of my blind sampling, and I told him to make them unique and he created a process uh, where he has these special names like this. Now, at the beginning of the year, my intent was to have these uh, tastings weekly, like every Friday or something, but it just did not come to fruition because I get I get pulled off into other projects and I'm not able to do it. So um, when I tell you that I'm I have been busy, Boy, have I ever, but all in good things. So like I said, I've been doing a lot of TV shows lately. I can't talk a whole lot about it, but I'm hopeful that you'll see a lot more from them about from me soon. Uh, and I've also been working on a book, and it's been since 2018 since I have had a new book come out. Uh, I've written seven books published that are published, and it's like it's been eating inside me that I need to write a book. So I cannot wait it wait for this to tell you about it. And I will tell you it is bourbon related. So I'm not uh, I'm not jumping out and doing something like meat again for the moment or rum. This is a pure book about bourbon and me. So I think you are going to love it. Right, let's uh, try to get that little try to fix that. This is bugging me. All right, well, I did the best I could. All right, I'm going to go to JV6 versus NQ5. Okay, JV6 has a bit, little bit of a, has a bit of sweeter nose. Hmm. NQ5 sure tastes lovely, though. So it's JV6. TL3 versus AS4. Mm. 
This is TL3. All right, so I notice a little bit of youth kind of approach in TL3 in comparison to JV6 and NQ5. We'll see about AS4. So when you are trying to when you're trying to call uh, call down your your numbers, you really are looking for what is better um, in one glass over the other. And I think I found that between with JV6 and NQ5, which are very neck and neck, I think that TL6 is just a little under it. And AS4 as well, judging by the nose. So TL3. TL3 will be going into third place. I'm sorry, fourth place. There you go. But TL3 is delicious, um, and I do highly recommend buying it. Whatever it is, it could it could win uh, significantly in competition. I just found that it didn't have the depth. Uh, it didn't have the complexity as JV6 nor NQ5, and AS4 kind of uh, right there too. So I'm looking at the, the final three, JV6, AS4, NQ5. Once again, you can go into the you can go into the comment section of this live stream and view uh, what are uh, the products I'm tasting and the product codes. Um, if you are watching this after the fact, like this is meant to be a live stream for people to enjoy live we're doing it live it's meant to be enjoyed like that but if you happen to catch it on the replay that's that's fantastic thank you and i look forward to your comments complaining about it being too long but you will find that the um, that the numbers will be in the description for you in the event that you cannot get the replay of the chat so let's go to as4 Hot damn. That is so good. In Q5. Hmm. Hmm. NQ5. What's going on, NQ5? JV6. Oh, man. JV6 feels like more of the traditional, um, I'm going to presume, Kentucky bourbon. This is... This hits all of those kind of like caramel butterscotch, uh, but it's got a lot of these like um, holiday notes in there. Uh, I find a lot of um, I find a lot to be very mm, um, pie driven. So like that crust, the pumpkin uh, part. Um, yeah. And I get in AS4, like, I'm just, I'm, I'm enamored with this also, this kind of like Thanksgiving flavor profile. Like a sweet potato. But in Q5, in Q5 is just like, it captures my tongue. Uh, and th this is an inc this is a very this is probably one of the hardest taste offs I have done in ten years. Like this is really hard. 
In fact, I, I'm low on water, so I'm just going to go get some more water real quick. And uh, give me one second. Got to rinse my palate out. I can't, I can't go in there with the palate of the, of the last one on my palate. The palate of my last one on my palate. Oh, that's going to be on a t-shirt. All right. Okay, so here's what I'm going to do. I have essentially a three-way tie between AS4, JV6, and NQ5. NQ5. Yeah, NQ5. Wait, is that NQ5? So what I'm going to do here is I am going to see, I'm going to taste these, uh, and I'm not going to talk. Uh, I'm going to see which ones um, concentrate on more more parts of the palate. So this is a this is a lim this is a an elimination that I will do. Like which one takes up more surface area on my tongue? What I'm looking for at this stage. And since these are all so equal, I mean, I'm probably it's gonna come down to like, you know, being on the one yard line. You're know, like losing the Super Bowl on the one yard line. Sorry, Tennessee Titans. Um, it's that's what it's gonna come down to. Uh, I'm gonna be looking for like how much of the palette does it cover, and how concentrated is it in comparison to the other ones. And then from there, I'm going to determine which one has the longest finish. Um, so that's what I'm going to be doing here. So if you'll excuse me, I'm going to go through the process. Uh, please stay with me. I will be joining you all in the chat after I have figured out what, uh, what my results are. And then I will pull up the results and give my thoughts on it. But also, you'll be able to ask me questions and so forth. And the most important thing is, like, you see what I'm tasting as I'm tasting it. And... Uh, you know what the you know what the sample numbers are. So here we go. I'm going to start with AS4. Okay, so AS4 um when I put it to like how many points on the palette is it hitting, uh, it did not as hit it as many as that I had thought. What I saw was it was really concentrated in the middle of the palette and toward the tip of the palette, but it was very light in the back. There was almost no presence uh, underneath the palette, none on the roof of the palette. So I recall that being very differently. Uh, being very different when I first tasted it. So that's a, that's one of those where, whew, what happened? Did I change? Um, did the whiskey, the other whiskeys like just become more into, did I get more into the other whiskeys? Like, so I'm going to taste that again. Cause AS4, when I, when I first like really focused on the palate, it was far more, far more concentrated than that moment right there. Yeah, same thing. Very middle palate driven. So, but if you are someone that loves uh, yams and and creme brulee, oh my God, this is this is hands down going to be the one for you. But I'm going to go to JV six now. 
Remember, I'm just focusing at this stage on the part of the palette. Okay, so this was very concentrated on the tip of the palette, also on the back, but it kind of dissipated. So the depth that AS4 had in the middle, like it was there forever. It was there forever. It was going, 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 going. Uh, JV6, when I'm really focusing on it like this, at the very highest level of critique that I can give it, it's kind of there. I mean, it's still on my palette, but the concentration level went from a 10 to like now maybe it's a three. I can still feel it on my palate. I can still taste it. But remember, when you are tasting a lot, that you got to really depend on that whiskey to be there on the tongue to really focus on it. Because if you're tasting 10, 20, 30, 40, and the whiskey goes away, um, that is that is a sign of the depth of, of the whiskey. So here I am at this kind of crossroads where uh, JV6 hits more points of the palate, like it gets a deeper level, it, it hits a, a larger chunk of the tongue, but AS4 actually, you know, penetrates one part of the palate much deeper and more enjoyable uh, than J, JV6. So that is a that is something that's a something I'm going to have to cross here in a second because I think it's going to come down to like you know, which do I prefer in this moment? So in Q5, I think I've been improperly calling it uh, in Q4, but in Q5. Okay. In Q5, just all up on there. It's just, it's like someone took a, a pair of pliers and grab my tongue, pull it out, and then put syrup all on there. And it kind of goes up here, curls in underneath, and I close my mouth and it hits the roof of my palate. So <laughs> NQ5 is fantastic on the palate. My only critique at this level, this stage, is I don't feel it on the tongue uh, to the length that I felt the other two. So what I mean by that is the finish. The finish does not appear to be as long. It's not as concentrated, but it gets on that palate and it holds there for like really powerful five, six seconds. And then whew, it goes from a 10 to a three pretty quick. Um, that is not necessarily bad. That just means like in, in this moment, I got to figure out which one, um, which style do I like more? And I can tell you right now, I've made a decision between AS4 and JV6. Uh, I just, I just think that it's more important to be in 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 a spot for a concentrated spot. Uh, I think it's more important to be really concentrated into an area than it is to be all over the tongue. Um, and so, JV6, which had more points on the palate than AS4 just did not have just did not have that same level of intensity as AS4. So I'm going I'm going to put JV6 in third place. But it's still an incredible representation of bourbon. But JV6 is going to be in third. And here's the crazy thing too, folks. I could do this tasting tomorrow. And the results are totally different. Yeah. If you do tasting long enough, you will realize that you change. You change. Your mood changes. What you like changes. What you what you wear. Uh, the temperature your the temperature of the room you're in. The music playing around you. The mood you're in with your spouse. All those things can influence how you taste. Even what you had for lunch. Like I could have had a big old fat juicy onion for lunch. And it completely throws off my palate. So it, it I could taste uh, JV6 tomorrow, and it would win. But tonight, on this day, and this tasting, it's going into third place. And I have to tell you, this, uh, this next one, 
Uh, I'm going to be very candid with you. I'm going to be very candid with you right now. In Q5, I think is my personal favorite. I think I I am drinking in Q5 over everything else on this table. But if when you are critiquing something, when you are assessing something, when you are putting points toward a whiskey or you are trying to choose a best in a competition or in in like a, a magazine article or whatever, you have to really do your best to put your personal preferences aside. With the exception of vodka, I am not able to do that. I will raise my hand and say that I'm not good enough to taste vodka. Um, uh, but any, at any rate, the, the, the truth is, like, I can taste something, break it down, score it, and not personally like it. Uh, a good example of that is, uh, is a lot of the Canadian whiskeys. Like, if you go by, if you understand what Canadian whiskeys are, how they're made, um, and everything, I can give them a score. I can break them down. I can do all of those things based on what I know Canadian whiskey to be. It is not my preference. It's not what I want. When you are judging Canadian whiskey versus scotch versus bourbon versus Irish whiskey, then you throw in your preferences. Then you're able to say, I just really like that one over that one. But when you are in the same kind of like loose category, which we are here, um, you really cannot, you really try to withdraw your personal preference. But I'm telling you, NQ5 is the one that I would be drinking at home. Uh, will it win today? I'm going to put it through the finish test. And I just told you all that I did not feel like it finished uh, at the same length as the other two. You know, maybe that was just a bad draw on my palate. We're about to find out. So let, here we go. I'm actually going to do a, um, I'm going to do a clock. All right, so I'm going to do a clock, and I'm going to taste these, and then I will, I'm going to let the finish roll, and I will stop the clock when the finish has finished. And if you are new to this tasting, uh, this is how I used to do them during the pandemic, and uh, it used to drive people crazy, but it's the best way I know how to do it because this is how real critics critique whiskey. So here we go. All right, move this over. Let me start that over. Let me move it over here in a more comfortable position. All right, start this. Hold on. So there you have it. This is a 43 second finish on AS4. 43 seconds. It's on the palate. Really powerful in that mid palate area. It's so concentrated in the middle of my tongue. It is. It, it's really. Uh, it's really insane how how uh, how concentrated it is on the middle of the tongue, but it's not anywhere else in the finish, and. I mean, that is very frustrating for me. It is very, very frustrating for me. So I, I want to feel this more on the tongue uh, than I do. Um, but damn, is it good where it's at? So maybe maybe it's just like having a, a bruiser of a running back. And like you know you can depend on that running back for five yards, four yards, three yards. But you ain't getting 20. <laughs> I mean, that might be what AS4 is. So we're going to go ahead and put that right on over here. I'm going to start a new clock and we are going to uh, we are going to taste the second one. I'm going to rinse my palate out. That's going to that's that's pause there. 
So we're going to go to NQ5. And I am going with my principles of how to taste in a competition. Once again, this is not about what I personally like. This is how to critique. Here we go. Well, hold on. Here we go. One, two, three. Yeah, it's fading. NQ5 is fading, um, and it's it's gone. So based on my principles of how I do in competition, uh, based on uh, what I typically like, and I, 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 I'd like to retract what I said. I think NQ5 would be like what I would normally drink. But I, I don't know, man. AS4 just kicked its ass so badly in the finish that, you know, I have to rethink that. So um, maybe maybe NQ5 wins on another day. But I definitely want to have NQ5 in my life. I want to have it by my side. But tonight, it comes in second. It does not win tonight's tasting. NQ5 is your second place contestant. And... In AS4, let me just go ahead and pop that in here. Um, AS4 is number one. So you can find those sample codes in the chat. I'm going to see them now for the first time. I, I do not know what I have been tasting. Well, I have a little bit more of that AS4. Tasty. So here we go. So LH1, you all already know what everything is. LH1 is the Hirsch uh, single barrel. Yeah, that was not good. I did not like that. And I I have been pretty much a proponent of uh of their uh, or an opponent of their stuff uh, many times. So Wow, coming in fifth is um, Booker's. The LA4 was Booker's. Uh, wow. I had uh, no idea. So Booker's is the uh, coming in fifth. It looks like the negative reviews that are out there, I uh, do agree. I do agree. Coming in fourth place, Brothers Bond. Brothers Bond, the MGP product. Uh, is coming into fourth place. Coming in third. Coming in third. JV6. Mictors. Wait. Did I, sk did I skip some? No, I got that right. Uh, Mictors comes in third. Mictors Bear Street. That's the most expensive one on in the field, by the way. Coming in second. NQ5. Wow. Three chord. Three chord representing tonight, coming in second. I mean, almost, uh, almost stole the show. But your winner, your winner, AS4 is K Luke, K Luke, batch four. So now I'm going to open the comments. Want to open the comments? Um, opening the comments here. What's going on, everybody? I can see you all now. And it uh, looks like folks are saying that you all are not surprised that K. Luke won. But holy smokes. Uh, I, I'm surprised by two things here. One, that Michter's barrel strength came in third. And two, three chord came in second. Like K. Luke, K. Luke finishing where it did did not surprise me. Uh, Booker's finishing where it did did not surprise me. Giving the 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 solid reviewers uh, that are out there uh, talking about uh, talking about their stuff uh, not being any good. Uh, the Hirsch single barrel. Look, man, I haven't liked any Hirsch that's come out in a while, so that does not surprise me one bit. Um, Brothers Bond, I probably finished right about where where I thought it would. And I'm not surprised with K. Luke one bit. 
Uh, it was a, it was definitely a back and forth, and I got to tell you, I got to tell you, I think, I think that did, I think that is what, I think that finish, that long, lengthy finish, but very concentrated on the palate as it was. I mean, it's hard to not, not pay attention to that, you know. So let's go. I'm gonna go in the comments, see what you all were saying. Um, Robert said, I definitely agree with taste changing from day to day. It does. It does. It does. It does. Jay Porter, ascots change. <laughs> I could use an ascot change. It's pretty sweaty right now. I'm, I'm pretty sweaty. I think my air conditioner went off. Um, all right. All right, so what do you all think? What do you all think of the, of the winner tonight? K. Luke? It looks like we got a lot of K. Luke fans in the house. Jonathan Garrett's like, yeah. Yeah, he says it's, uh, you picked it up. It's a very good pour. Michael says only, only 750 bottles in that batch. Well, damn. But Kurt says there's, they're available at Sealbox, so. You know, give that a go. But look at this. I mean, uh, NQ5 is three chord, comes in second. I mean, the, the second and first, think about this, folks. The second and first place products are not big players. And this stuff was awful. Good God, this was awful. Not like death awful, but awful. Woo! I am sweaty. Am. I am super ass sweaty. All right, y'all. Get your questions in. Get your questions in. I'm going to be... Uh, I Remember, we got Matt Porter's... Uh, everyone everyone from here, I hope you're able to go to Matt Porter's uh, celebration of 50,000 subscribers. You know, ADHD whiskey is special to all of us, and uh, I love me some Matt Porter, so I want to be there to support him. So make sure you head on over there after... Um, also, if I get if we wrap this up and I have enough time, do any Club Marzipan members want to do a live stream? I might be able to do a live stream. Maybe uh Hmm, what do you think? Chasing Neat, thanks for always being honest. Well shit. I don't know how to be anything else, man. I really don't. Um if I wasn't honest, I couldn't sleep at night. Um John asks, isn't uh, Hirsch Willet distillate? Um, you know, I know some of it was. I, they're not disclosing that this is Hirsch. Uh, that I'd have to look on this one. I don't know. I I, I don't know on this one. They, they have uh, a hodgepodge of barrels they get from everywhere. So let's put it that way. I don't I don't know. I don't know where that's coming from. So batch four, Larry Tompkins says that it's uh, reminds him of Four Roses Limited Edition. That's solid. Uh, Javier Acosta says the three chord is sourced. Did they tinker with the barrel, AK finish? You know, I got to be honest with you. I feel like... I feel like... Uh, I would be able to detect if they were like adding things to it. This does not feel like anything's been added to it. It feels clean to me, but you know, there are it is a barrel finish. It's finished in uh, toasted and, and honey barrels, but uh, it's still it's it's very tasty. But it's also a blend of bourbon and corn whiskey finished in those barrels, so. They're doing all kinds of shit. 
Hey, Danny's in the house. Man, good to see you. Matt Storr, been sitting here tasting through the entire K. Luke lineup. That's awesome. That's awesome. So you're probably pleased with the win tonight. I, I got to tell you, uh, I'm not surprised. I thought Michter's, just knowing my palate, I thought Michter's might win tonight. But that's why you do it blind. That's why you do it blind. You don't, you don't do, if I were to do this like bottles out, um, K. Luke probably finishes up there. I mean, I don't know. I don't know where, I don't know where three chord finishes. You got to do these things. You got to do them uh, blind. Like if you're going to do it, like assess it as best. I mean, you can be, if you are open, you can be as, um, you can do your best to be as transparent and, and honest as you can. And, there, and and we all do that. But there's something powerful about doing it blind. Like that bottle cannot influence you. There's no way it can influence you. And I want to thank Gary Penna tonight, uh, who was in the chat, dropping what the what the products were. You know, I'm not able to do these blind tastings very often, and uh, there's a lot of work that goes into it. So a big shout out to Gary for doing that. Big shout out to my guy who does my blind bourbon uh, pours. That's um, that is um, Alex Godfrey. So I appreciate that. Uh, Phil Bosch says, uh, my boy Philip in the house. Good to see you, Philip. Congratulations on whatever K. Luke has left for sale <laughs> being bought before the end of the weekend. I love that. Um, Tim, uh, Fred, is this uh, K. Luke's first series of releases? Never heard of them. This is Batch 4. They are a new company, maybe two years old. Um, the... The uh, founder is a longtime uh, retailer, uh, Marcianos, in, um, in, I hope I didn't butcher that. I butchered it last time, so hopefully I got it right this time. And it, he is, uh, he is the, uh, he's a longtime retailer and a very great blender. And the fact he includes his wife in the blending process, I think makes it all the better. So it's a couple blending and ADHD whiskey in the house saying thank you for the kind words. Hey Matt, I love you, man. You're you're an incredible judge on the Ascots, and I'm so proud of you. I cannot wait to join you tonight uh, on your live stream. I will definitely, definitely be there. Um, but I'm I'm so fucking proud of you. I really am. Hundred thousand very soon. Uh, Hellstorm. I see a lot of Brothers Bond in the area of Tennessee. I live. So hopefully same will go for the cash drink. You know that you know they finished uh what were they were they finished fourth. If you recall at the top of when I was narrowing things down, I said it was a four-way tie for first and I had to make some decisions to put one thing over the other and you know Brothers Bond what ended up being Brothers Bond which was TL3 was um was just not, you know, just didn't have the same meat as the as the others. But it definitely whipped uh, what was Booker's ass. I will tell you that. Like the drop off from uh, from Booker's to the other four. The other four were like they could win any competition. Like with the right room of tasters, uh, Brothers Bond could win that competition. That's that. It was very good. But you know. Booker's was like awful, so in the in the taste off of um, you know that I just had. So Scott uh, Van Kanel Keen Kanel just tried K Luke uh, batch five. Aw, Scott, you're getting batch five already, and uh, says uh, it's amazing. Definitely my best pour of 2023. That's awesome, man. They're crushing it. They are absolutely crushing it. And, you know, they won tonight's tasting as well. So, y'all, I think I'm going to go ahead and head over to uh, my uh, my uh, my Patreon, which is Club Marzipan. You can find that in the description. And I am going to, I'm going to pop on over there to do a live stream. But remember, all of WhiskeyTube, we need to be celebrating Matt from ADHD Whiskey tonight. 
So head over there, head over there at uh, nine o'clock. At nine o'clock, he is doing his uh, his live stream. So we're gonna head on over there after um, after we're done in the Club Marzipan chat or live stream. So thank you all so much for tuning in. Be safe out there. If you haven't already, hit the like button, tell a friend about the channel, subscribe, and come on over to Club Marzipan, where vodka sucks and we have one hell of a time. So cheers out there, y'all. Be safe, and uh, yeah, go Pokes.